Okay, thank you very much indeed for joining us here Love on Sky News this afternoon. News at Sky.com 84501. Do let us know what you think. Um, just being told that we've got an interview just coming in uh, from Abdul Kudos. He is the uh, brother of the two brothers who were killed uh, in Birmingham a couple of nights ago. This is what Abdul had to say a few moments ago. Well, losing my brothers has been uh, quite hard for me and uh, devastating. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I had two younger uh, brothers. They were like my sons, little lion cubs. They were my little lions. They were, and uh, I've met, I miss them dearly. Were you out there that night with them? Um, did... uh, not really. Actually, I've seen them when they opened the fast, and uh, basically, they just uh, head off. Uh, both of them did with the, the mates, just to uh, hang out and get some uh, more food from uh, the shop. They just have a little bite at the house and then they might have to eat some food, more food. Yeah. And did you, did you know they were going out to, to protect the shops that night? Uh, well, apparently not. I didn't know at the time then, uh, until um, I got a call later saying uh, my brothers are, are on the floor and there's been a uh, car accident they've been involved in. And when you got that call, how did you feel? quite shocked. Actually, well, the way my friend broke the news to me, he was a mate from school, he says, I don't know, he may be uh, your brother, and he says uh, one of them, he said one of the names, it could be the other. Or, I don't know, it's both of them, or it can't be, I don't know, identified. So when he said like that, I thought, why is he playing with me about it like that, you know? Why doesn't he tell me clear cut what, what's exactly happened? Until I uh, actually uh, told my father to get up and take me down to the scene. When we got there, I seen three brothers on the floor, two of my own and one of their mates. He uh, was just literally around the corner from where his business was, and he was just protecting his own business. And the other chap was just the little kid. He was just protecting his own house, like as any human being would do, you know? What did you see when you arrived? Well, I seen about, uh, well, basically straight away, I went around the corner, I seen uh, a big number of crowd, over 100 people surrounding. There's like a, a lot of chaos, and uh, there's a, a riot, riot police there, about three ambulances. And my brother, and I, as, they wouldn't let me through, first of all. And they, they were doing CPR on my brother, so I says to the officers, uh, I want to go through, that's my brother, and they keep on pushing me back, not letting me through. I says, that's my brother, could you let me through? I want to see my brother. I want to see my brother. I want to see my brother. You cannot stop me. Don't be stupid. Don't be like, letting, you know, pushing me back. That is my blood. They're my two younger sons. They're my little cubs. You can't leave me like right? looking at them suffering and I can't be right next to them. They're on the floor and, 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 and his mate as well. So Shahzad Ali was to, to, for the first, I seen my younger brother, the graduate, university graduate. I seen him, hard working person. He's got his own self employed, he's got his own business. He was on the floor, he wasn't breathing at all. His chest wasn't even going up and down on it at all. They're doing CPR on him. They did the same thing with Haru, the middle one, the friend of his. And then Abdul Musab, the same thing with him. They were doing CPR. And all three of them, there was just a pool of blood, like a swimming pool of blood. Literally, Abdul Musab had, had a lot of blood on the floor. Literally, about five and a half pints were on the floor. Because as he fell back down, his, his, his head was like a punctured football, as you can say. There's no air like in the football, exactly like that. And the head was mushy and they had cloth going all the way around his head, tied up. And uh, Shahzad Ali was just lying down straight like this. And they were like, there's no clothes on them. They're doing CPR on him. They had tubes in Abdul Musava's uh, mouth and uh, um, pumping oxygen into his mouth. And he couldn't, there's no, no signs of pulse or no heartbeat or nothing. Your instinct must have been, I've got to get to them, I've got to help them. Exactly. Well, uh, ma'am, at, at that time, when I was looking at three of my brothers, I didn't know if I'm just going to go to the one or a missile and not get to the other one in time. <laughs> Both of them, three of them are not breathing. Going to the other one, the second one, I can't even get to him because I'm giving all my time to the first one. I was supposed to get to the second one, but God has just only gave me two hands. And I'm losing three brothers as martyrs, they've got them in Mart. And it's just naive ch children there just hanging about. Yeah, but they're just protecting their own, weren't they? The businesses, because the police couldn't do enough. And if that was the case, 
why why didn't the police divert the uh, the the right uh, crowd? Why do they push them down towards where they know the inevitable inevitable can happen, where there's people's businesses and shops? If they can protect the malls, why can't they protect the human beings? That's my my concern. The shops are insured, yeah. Uh, people are not insured, are they? You can't yeah, repair a person, can you? Even if you got the private treatment as Bupa, you can't fix a person once he's, he's gone. You can't repair him like a car or a business. It would be the natural. Rest of life. It would be natural for you to want retribution, to want revenge. Um, nah, that's not what you nah, want. Nah, nah, that's that's a, that, I think that I think uh, saying uh, um, revenge is a bit stupid. Mm. Uh, in a sense, yeah, like people would say that out there, you know, revenge and that, and you know yourself, you're you know, sensible lady yourself, and a sensible person would actually take you by law. And my request is that please do not, yeah, cause a riot over this. I want calm and peace, please. They've gone to a better place, and just pray for them. That's that, that's my, you know, the the moment words there for for everybody out there who are listening. You obviously feel so solidarity with um, Haroon's dad. I mean, he spoke at length yesterday in a, in a similar vein, didn't he? Exactly. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Terry is a, a good mate of mine, a mate of a mate as well. And, like, he's an older brother to me as well. His sons were like nephews and friends to me. I mean, uh, they do not do no bad. They don't smoke. They don't do nothing bad. They, uh, they had nice hobbies of having nice cars, uh, looking after them cars. And more, more of all, since they were growing up, I could see them being the next uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. They were very good boxers. Their father was a boxer, and the sons were boxers. And uh, we come from a family where my father uh, been a wrestler back home. So, like, you know, in a sense, we just we were caring and loving with everybody in every community. We were just in our area, I've been living here 33 years. They're like a year difference between three of us. I mean, all our lives, I've always taught them to be good and protect yourself, that's it. Not to do bad, respect everybody, smaller or older. And how is your father? I, I know Devastated, heartbroken. Doesn't know if he's in this world or where. He's just, uh, he's, he's just, you know, I was just like, I am controlling him at the moment and, you know, um, being there for him all the time and telling him not to cry. But as much as he tried to stop crying, you always remember the loved ones, don't you? It's just only been, what, 24 hours, 48 hours? It's very hard to bear. I was crying my heart out for both of them. I cried so much that my tears ran out. I never drank no water, no food, no nothing, not eating when I sleep. And I don't want this act to happen because of the rights to other parents, mothers or fathers to mourn. It doesn't even say about the opposite party, you know, they've done this, this and that. As long as they get jail sentences, that's fine. As long as, you know, yeah, nobody's, justice. you know, life doesn't go away and get justice. Thank you, sir. Um, do you mind if we just get some pictures of you and, yeah. you, and your father yeah. and your friends? Yeah. Maybe, I, Um, Abdul Kudos with some of his friends lost two of his brothers during rioting in Birmingham on Tuesday night. Three men lost their lives, two of them were his brothers. Let's talk to retired Detective Chief Superintendent Rick Turner. He was former borough commander of Richmond Police. Very difficult. When, when you see the, the human effect of, of those riots, um, that's when it man looking for support from his um, from his friends this is this is the difficult end of absolutely um, activity for police isn't it my heart goes out for for his himself his family his friends their lives have been so changed by those events uh, in Birmingham uh, as of many people's lives been changed none so more than when someone is being killed but also people who've lost businesses livelihoods uh, by the actions of uh, basic thuggery criminals uh, who I'm glad to see uh, the government and the police uh, are actually now uh, putting them behind bars, not before time. 
The three men who lost their lives trying to protect property um, on Tuesday night in Birmingham. Those are, are the images of those three young men. 1,200 people so far have been arrested up and down the country. How, how does that investigation proceed as far as the police are concerned? It's, it's a tall order, isn't it? It is a tall order, but I would guarantee you every police officer in the country would wish to work 24 hours uh, to bring people to justice for these because everybody is appalled. Certainly from the Metropolitan Police perspective, it'll be one of the biggest major investigations uh, that Scotland Yard has undertaken in the last few years. Uh, there will be hundreds of officers who may have some time, uh, for example, from, from terrorist work or, or from murder squads that is not quite suppressing. They will be working flat out on many, many lines of investigation, not just CCTV. They'll be working on forensic lines of investigation, house to house, witnesses, uh, community intelligence, which, which is fantastic news to see that that's coming through. Um, and they'll wish to arrest these people as quickly as possible, put them before the courts, and if they're to be remanded to uh, the Crown Court for sentencing or for further inquiries, remand them in custody. Take them off the streets. That's what these uh, people deserve and that's what the communities deserve after what they've done to the communities throughout the country. How do you